huh? Okay, good evening, dear women. I'm so happy to see you, righteous women, kol akavod. I would like to remind you that we are two weeks from uh, Rosh Hashanah, so yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. the beginning, Bezrat Hashem, of the new year. I would like to tell you something that you remember last lesson we spoke about I am to my uncle and my uncle is to me he who shepherds the roses and we spoke about it that during the month of Elul the 26 measures of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, measures of mercy are around us all around us which means that the, me the 13 measures that Moshe Rabbeinu received in Parashat Kitisa, you remember I told you, in the Chumash Mot, and then we have the 13 measures that the Prophet Micha received in, in, a, in the book of Micha, and over there together it's 26 measures of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they're all surrounding us with a lot of mercy. Dear women, I would like to remind you, if you, I don't know if you feel that, but I'm sure that everybody feels that. With all of the things that happens around us, with all of the ma'pechot, you know, all of the, the countries that we can see, that they're taking off governments and presidents and kings, with all the, everything that happens around us, I would like to remind you that we are in the days of Mashiach. And everything will happen. You remember I told you that like this it will happen. It will happen so quickly that we won't even have time to do tshuva. This is the time to do tshuva. There are two things that I wanted to remind you. One is, Tamim Hashem Elokecha, you have to be honest with, with God, with Hashem your God. This is, Tamim Hashem Elokecha, Ve'atzna Lechet Im Hashem Elokecha. Which means, the second thing that we have to do, very simple things, not politics, nothing. The, se the second thing that we have to do is, Atzna Lechet, which means you have to be modest with God. What does it mean to be modest? Dear women, please, you have to You have to take upon yourselves, dear women, which is very important to be modest with clothing, with the way we speak to each other, with the way we walk and handle ourselves. Everything means modesty. Derech Eretz is modesty, which means courtesy is modesty. This is part of us. This is the time. Because of righteous women, the children of Israel were saved from Egypt. And because of those righteous women now, the, the, the children of Israel are going to be saved again. So we have to be righteous. And it starts with us because every woman in her home is Kohen Gadol, is a high priest. So it first starts with us. And how do we work on our measures? Because we have to work, we have to persuade ourselves to choose to do good instead of doing bad. Even with things that we don't really feel that it's bad, because sometimes we don't feel, well, if I go with a short skirt or with a short sleeve, we don't really think that we are doing something bad. But dear women, I would like to remind you, because this is, a, it's like the end of days, this is the end. So because this is truly the end, and I told you that it's written in the book of Yamim, that Tarash Shalom Shabbos is written that 300 years before the uh, 7,000, the last Rucha Babel, before the seven, the last uh, uh, thousand, which means the days of Mashiach will start. The Holocaust is part of it. The creation of the state of Israel is part of it. Everything that you see now, that with nature is part of it. Everything around that surrounds us, everything that happens with governments, it's part of it. The, the high quality of life, which means that you have to pay a lot of money for things that you buy, is part of it. We can see that the money, the, the worth of the money, the euro and the dollar goes down, and you can see that the shekel goes up. This is part of it. This is part of it, dear women. This is part of it. And we can see that all the real estate in Israel goes up and all around the world everything goes down. Because this is what is written in the prophets. This is part of Mashiach. The days of Mashiach. It's really happening. Everything is happening. You know, it's written over there also, which means that the face of the generation is like the face of a dog. And it's much more like this. It's not only that people become more rude, but it means that even the dogs are treated like human beings. They inherit, uh, inherit a lot of money. They have yeah. servants. That it's much more, which means it's it's here already. This is Mashiach is already here. You understand? 
So this is the time to wake up, especially on the month of, on the month of Elul, it's easier to wake up. Because it's written, which means when a lion roars, who is not going to be afraid? This is the Prophet Amos saying. And I explained to you, it means that in, during these days, God is all surrounding us, the Shekhinah is around us. It's easier to do Tshuva to Hashem. So this is the time to wake up. Don't wait even a minute longer. This is the time to do Tshuva. And I would like to state and tell you, dear women, that today we're going to study from Likutei Marim how to do Tshuva and how we can concentrate on ourselves and work on ourselves in order to help ourselves do Tshuva. Because we have to recognize what we have, what parts of the soul we have, where do, where do those parts of the soul are, are in our body, and how we can work on them in order to, to do the right thing with Hashem. Shh, let's concentrate. So it says, Belikutei Amarim. It says in Shh. Dear women, let's concentrate because I'll, I'll have to translate because it's in Hebrew. So I'll have to translate. So you know that Likutea Marim, the old Rebbe of Lubavitch wrote it. Rabbi Menachem Schnozer Mendel, uh, uh, this, uh, the last Rebbe, and I would like to, this is the first Rebbe that wrote it, Atania, uh, Likutea Marim. And I'm going to chapter 9, and it also, it, you can see the same concept also in chapters. 12 and in chapter 16 and I would like to tell you what it's what's written here it's written over here it says that you I remember I, I taught you that there are five parts of the neshama okay in general five parts because also in that those five parts there are also sub parts so five parts are Yechida, Chaya, Neshama, Ruach, Nefesh. I'll write it on the board. Yechida, Chaya, Neshama, Ruach, Nefesh. Those are five parts. Yechida and Chaya are all up in heaven under the chair of Hashem, under the throne of Hashem. But Neshama, Ruach and Nefesh can be here inside the person. Those three parts of the neshama can be here inside the person. Shh. When we are born, we are born with a nefesh. This is the lowest part of the neshama. We are born with a nefesh. When we come to the age of mitzvot, the age of 13 for boys and the age of 12 for girls, then the ruach joins us, dear women. Which means when we are born, we have yetzerara with us. When we come to mitzvot, Yetzer Atov joins us. He joins us. You know, there's a, there's a, a big rabbi that became a big rabbi. And they used to ask him, when he, when he was a child, he was so righteous. They used to ask him, tell me, how did you choose? You know, because children usually have an ego and they concentrate on themselves. They cry if they don't have what they want. And they, they're very egocentric. So they used to ask him, tell us. How could you control yourself and how could you choose the good thing from the bad? So he used to say that in order to listen to Balei Din, people who come to court, you have to listen to both of them at the same time, which means both of them are standing in front of you and the judge has to listen to both of them. So he said, because I know that I was born with an evil inclination, I used to tell the evil inclination to wait until I'll hear the good inclination, until I hear the Yetzer Atok, and then I can decide either to do good or bad. But I have to listen to both of them, you understand? So Be'ezrat Hashem, we have to do the same thing, to listen to both of them. So it says... The Neshama comes only if you're really righteous, but God decides who's righteous. And this is a big... Pro what age or after what stage? It's Adam Atzmo. If he's very righteous, God gives him the Neshama, and the Neshama, the Mishkan, the place that she is, is in here, over here. Chochma Bina Vadat, over here in the head. Dear, what we'll speak about it in a few minutes, very uh, in details, a few minutes. I would like to tell you, so it says in Likutea Marim that every... Uh, 
every person from the children of Israel has in his left side of the soul the nefesh, the left side of the heart, the nefesh which means the nefesh behemati, the nefesh is the part that all, it, it is the lowest part the, that wants to do everything, all the pleasures in this world, everything physical in this world, the pleasures of this world, this nefesh wants to do. This is her part. So it says, which means all the anger and all the desires that a person feels and everything that he wants comes from this nefesh. I would like to tell you, if we wouldn't have the nefesh, we wouldn't eat, we wouldn't drink, we wouldn't go and, and, uh, and reproduce because we would want to work Hashem all the time. We wouldn't want to do anything in this world. Only to be close to Hashem. This is the nefesh, this is the part of the nefesh. So it says, which means from the heart, it goes through all the body, because the heart is the pump, and the pump moves the blood all over the body, okay? It's very, it's very important. I will give you a few things that you will understand. I told you there are three parts, neshama, what the nefesh. And the neshama is in the moach, in the brain. This part, which is very high, is in the brain. And the Ruach, its place is in the heart. Lev. Ruach Balev. And the Nefesh is in the Kaved, in the liver. Okay? This is in the liver. But this is in the heart. And this is in the brain. Okay? Neshama, Ruach, the Nefesh. Dear women. So we have Moach, Lev, the Kaved. And I would like you to see... All these, ma, levanti. Okay, I would like you to see the first letters of each word, moach, which is the brain, lev, which is the heart, and the kaved. They add up to melech. And if you remember, when we read this week's portion of the week is kitavol, dear women. But you remember that we had the portion of the week of shoftim, and over there in shoftim. There was, there was a law, Som, Tassim, Alecha, Melech. You should choose a king upon yourself. This is one of the Jewish laws. Over there in Parashat Shoftim, in Chumash Dvarim. A few weeks ago we read Parashat Shoftim. So we had this law, Som, Tassim, Alecha, Melech. You have to put upon yourself a king. So what is a king? So a king by the Pardes is a person that has neshama, ruach, nefesh, and this is melech, because you see, the neshama is in the, in the brain, our ruach is in the heart, and the nefesh is in the liver. So the first letters join up of each one of them to melech, to a king. So a person who has neshama, ruach, and nefesh, he's a king. But now how do we use this? What is it? So look, it's beautiful. It says, the Arizal says, that everything starts with three things. How, how do we act? It starts with three things. One is the makshava, is the thought, makshava. And then we have the ratzon, the will. Okay, thought, will. And then we have maaseh, action. Okay, za maaseh. Makshava, ratzon, maaseh. We have a thought, okay, it comes into our mind. We have a thought to do something. Then we have the will, and because of the will, we start acting, we do something about it. So if we have a machshava, a thought of mitzvah, we want to visit someone that is sick, then we, we feel very sad for him and we feel for him, you know, so our heart starts to pump the blood. So we want to do something about it, but then we use our hands, legs, and we go to that person's house and we do the mitzvah before for him. So everything starts with a machshava, at some massive. Where does the, the machshava live in? The machshava, the thought is in our brain, in our mind, over here, b'neshama, where the neshama is. And then when do we ha where do we have the will? The will is in the heart. Aratzon zebalev. The will is in the heart. And then the action is in, is in the nefesh, in, in the liver, because the liver is where the blood is cleaned. And because of the blood we can act, otherwise we couldn't act. So it starts, amaset goes through the liver. We can act because of the blood. Kid, adam wa nefesh. It's written in parashat re'eh. Hadam wa nefesh. The blood is the spirit, is the nefesh. It's the lowest part. Because I, I tried to find translations to Neshamas, uh, Ruach and Nefesh. I couldn't find a real translation. So you know that the 
which is the lowest part, the higher, the a more higher elevated part is the ruach, and then the neshama. Now I would like to tell you something. Harizal says, that the neshama it wants to be close to Hashem. It's over here in the Chabad, Chokma Bina Veda, Chokma Keter Chokma Bina, which over here it wants to go to Hashem. It wants to do everything that Hashem wants wants her. Now the blood, the, the blood itself wants to do everything that is physical in this world, all the pleasures of this world. So it wants to go over there. But the heart is where it, the blood is pumped. Over there is the will. Over there is the battery between good and bad, the plus and the minus. In, in the heart, okay? This, the heart, alev, is the plus and the minus. Here's where we choose between good and bad. Here it starts. The war starts here. Likutei, the Tanya says it's beautiful because I wanted to let you hear that because it describes it very beautifully. It says, The body is called like a small city. And then it says, Like two kings are fighting over a city. It says, each one of the kings wants to conquer that city and wants to rule the city. Which means each one of the each one of the kings wants to rule the body at this city and to conquer it, and that that person will do exactly what it wants, what what one of the kings wants. And what are the two kings? One of them is the neshama. And the other one is the nefesh, dear women. You see, neshama and nefesh. The neshama wants that the whole body will do exactly what Hashem wants her to do. The whole, all of it is complete. All of the neshama and the body will do exactly what Hashem wants it to do. But then the nefesh wants to do it exactly the opposite. The nefesh wants to have all of the desires of this world. Everything that we see in this world, it desires a new car, it desires a new clothing, more... Um, uh, more jewelry, everything that we have here. It decides to go to a discotheque. It decides to dance, to do whatever it wants, you know, to eat as plenty as it can. This is the desires of this world. It decides that people will look at us, that we are beautiful, and maybe we'll show more skin here and there. It, this is what the nefesh desires. All the pleasures in this world. And then those two kings, Neshama and Nefesh, they start to fight over the body. Who do they fight over? Overruling the heart, because the heart is the battery. In the heart there are two places, there's the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. The left side of the heart is filled with blood. Over there is the evil inclination. It's filled with blood, everything pumps, everything wants it. The other side, the left side is not filled, the right side is not filled with blood. So. Over there is the good inclination. So the fight starts, who is going to control the heart? Because in the heart there's the will. And I told you, you cannot act without the will, okay? The will is over there. So you have to conquer the heart in order to do the action, to do act in this world. So dear women, look over here. If the neshama conquers the moach, the brain, you think and you say, I'm going to do exactly what Hashem wants me to do, then all of this, all of these functions will do exactly what Hashem, will do all the mitzvot, will be righteous in this world. And we will conquer our evil inclination. When we conquer our evil inclination, we, Baruch Hashem, we are doing tshuva. When we have a thought of conquering the heart, you know, the pleasures, the... Lichbosh. Lichbosh so it says when we start, we, we start thinking about conquering our evil inclination, our, our desires, because we know when we have desires to this physical world, when we think about conquering it, this is a, a petah, this is an opening for tshuva, to have a tshuva. Dear women, then God opens all of the path. He opens the path in order that even wagons and horses will go through. He brings us people to help us, like angels. They help us to do the mitzvah that we want. If we want, to, for example, to cover our head, we decide it, and it's not easy if we did not cover it before. So God send us, sends us people that will help us. Then we see, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. When you want to do something, people with the same desire come towards you because God works with our thoughts. He knows our thoughts. God is the only one that knows our thoughts. No angel can read our thoughts except for Hashem. Hashem speaks to us through our thoughts. How do we know that what we hear is true? 
the first thing that comes in our mind, this is the, the true thing. This is the emit. Why? Because after that comes the politics of the evil inclination. You know, all of the reasons, the good ones, the bad ones, the reasons, the logical, the not logical ones, this is the sechel matchil agiyah, all of, all of the reasons, this is the politics. But you know, your first instinct, this is a true one, this is from Hashem. This is the first thing that you heard. You remember that I told you that it's written by Mishnah, in Sechet Avot, it's written, Kol yom yotzeb bat kol vumachrezet, oy leim abriyot mit melbona shel Torah, which means there's a voice that shouts every day. Oy vavoy to those people from the shame of the Torah that did not study and don't do and follow the Torah. So dear women, now God is roaring, which means now he even goes to the people that they have shells, big shells around them. When do we have shells? When we are separated. When the body is separated, when the heart and the blood is separated from the neshama. How do we know that? Because King Solomon said, he says like this, can I wipe this? Okay. King Solomon says this. Venirgan mafrid aluf. Venirgan mafrid aluf. The Bemishlei. Mishlei, I think that Zion, if I remember correctly. Mishlei is 16. Dear women, listen very. King Solomon says, Venirgan mafrid aluf. What does he mean? Nirgan, you know, in Hebrew, in, in a simple translation, it means somebody that is angry. When you're angry, you're you're separating God from you because Aluf means God, okay? The King of Kings, Zaluf, God. But it's more than that. By the Pardes, if we look at it, look how beautiful it is. If you take the word Nirgan, the Nun, the nun over here, over here you see can, there's a Nun, it's written by Nun, Reish, Gimel, and another Nun in Hebrew. This Nun stands for Nefesh, and this Reish stands for Ruach. You see the two parts of the soul, and this nun st stands for neshama, and this, the gimel, is the guf, which means the desires of the body separate between the soul, the neshama, that wants to be close to Hashem, and nefesh and ruach, it separates them. So what happens? The body goes after the desires of the blood, where the nefesh is. And the heart is pumping and he's very excited. The heart is very excited and, and the blood is flowing so quickly. In, instead of doing that for, to, do, to do a mitzvah, it does that to do an avera. That's why Benirgan Mafrid Aluf, which means that there's a separation between the nefesh and ruach because of the body, the desires of the body and the neshama. We cannot hear Hashem. So usually people who do not remember Hashem and, and they don't pay attention. Sometimes there are people who do not pay attention. But you know everybody has a time and place that God knocks on his door and he says, Wake up my child, it's your time to do tshuva. Yeah. So dear women, listen very carefully. If, you, if, a, if people do not hear the voice of Hashem, the voice of God, the voice from heaven that says, that says to us, that we have to wake up and do the Torah and to be committed to that. So if we do not hear that, and I told you that when we, how do we hear that? We hear that by the thoughts of tshuva that we have. If we have everyday thoughts of tshuva that we feel that maybe we made a mistake, we feel that maybe we need to do another mitzvah that we didn't do. We feel, we feel that. Once we feel that, we know that we can hear the voice of Hashem. We don't have a lot of shells around us because there's no person that will be righteous in this world without any shell. It says, King Solomon says, "En tzaddik sheyaset tov velo yichta." Shell is a klipa, klipa shel chet. Okay, dear women. So it it means, dear women, that everybody has it, but it depends how many do we have. So God says that on the month of Elul, that even the ones that have so much. And they always throw them, even if they hear Musal, you know, morality words, and people speaking to them, and they usually put it aside. On the month of Elul, God roars like a lion, and He breaks all of the shells, all of the blocking that the person has around him, God breaks it and goes inside his heart. Why? Because in the heart, there's the choice, the will to choose between good and bad. Like I told you, this is in the heart, Balev over there. So it says also, look, 
you remember in Parashat Yitro, it's written like this, ואתה, אם שמוע תשמעו בקולי ושמרתם את בריתי, והייתם לי סגולה מכל העמים. והייתם לי סגולה מכל העמים. It says in Parashat Yitro, God says, if you listen to me, to my Torah, and you will keep my treaty, בעזרת השם, It says, I am going to take you as my people, Beitem Li Sgula. And the question is, why did he use the word Sgula? Why is the word Sgula used? Because Sgula is from the word Segol. Segol is the dots, the vowels in Hebrew that is like this, three dots. Okay? Those three dots, when God said that in Parashat Yitro, he meant, If you will be king, if your neshama will control your heart and your nefesh, your ruach and your nefesh, then you are, it says. You see the three dots, it's neshama, ruach, nefesh, moach, lev, kaved, which means uh, brain, heart and liver, three dots. We, and it goes to what the Arizal says, machshava, thought, a will, And then over here is the action, dear women. Everything in three dots. And they're all even. You see the three dots? In the word chesed, you have to nine three dots. Okay. It's a lachat of chesed. It's a You see here, over here, dear women, three dots. Yes, it's exactly how we do the, um, the Passover. We have the three dots and they're all even. Neshama, wach, nefesh. When they're all worshiping Hashem, they're all even. All of them have one, one purpose, one goal, to worship Hashem. This is what we need to do. So in order to conquer our evil spirit, we know that the Neshama has to rule. Now it says, in Masechet Brachot, it says a beautiful thing over there. It says, Balak, uh, you remember in the, in the portion of the week of Balak, and that he called Bil'am in order to curse the children of Israel? So it says over there, the El Zoem Bechol Yom, which means that God in Tehillim, it's written, King David says, God is angry every day. And it's, it says over there, Bekama Zamon, how much is he angry? It says, Rega, one moment. And it says over there, Ve'en kol briya yacholah lechaven bota sha'a. And no, no human being knows the right moment that Hashem is angry. No one except for Bila Marasha. יום שלו זה אלף שנה, זה רגע. It says over here, it says over here that only the only person who knew exactly at what time Hashem has anger was only Bilam Yodea Da'at El Yom, that he was the only one that knew that. So God did not, uh, said, God told the children of Israel, you should be happy, I had mercy upon you. I was not angry at the time that Bilam wanted to curse you. He wasn't angry, God. He said, I did not use this anger. That's why the children of Israel sinned with not Moab and Midian. That's why they sinned. Because God wasn't angry that those days of three days. He wasn't angry. And he would ask me, <laughs> what would, it's rega, it's one moment. What can Bilal say in that moment? What can he say? That he can curse the children of Israel. God said, So tell me, what can he say? The only thing that Bilam Rashad and Marasid wanted to say is the opposite of king. Instead of saying king, he wanted to say Kalim. The, the opposite, you see, instead of saying Melech, you see that? Melech is Mem Lamet Cha, here. The opposite, which means he wanted that the liver will control the heart, will control the brain. which means the nefesh is going to control the spirit, the ruach that is in the heart and, the, and it will control the neshama that is in the brain. That's what he wanted to say, one word. That the chill, and then, בדיוק הפוך ממלך. זאת אומרת, תסתכלי, שהנפש שבכבד תשלוט בלב, ברוח שבלב, כי אמרתי לכם שהלב זה הפליס והפלוס והמינוס, נכון? הוא רצה שבדיוק יהיה הפוך. שזה ישלוט הנפש, תשלוט ברוח, תשלוט בנשמה. Which means it will force the neshama to do bad things. Even though the, it, the, it, the neshama cannot be separated from the body until we, are, we, are, we, are, we pass away, until we are dead. So it has to suffer with the body. When we do bad things, it suffers. It, shouts, it tries to tell us you are doing bad things. 
That's why Rashaim Meleim Charata it's written. It's written that the, the wicked people are full of regret. And you will say, what are you talking about? We know a lot of wicked people that are, they don't have any regret. But the neshama, the neshama that is in their body does have a regret. They do not hear the regret. They do not pay attention. I told you, they put it away. But this month of Elul, which is the lion, the lion roars, who is not afraid, who won't have the fear of Hashem? Dear women, we had an earthquake, we had a, a, a news of hurricane, everybody was afraid, everybody went home, both things, stayed at home, watched the TV or listened to the radio to see what's going on. And, you know, with a, a little bit shaking of, of, of nature by the hand of Hashem, which means we are not, we do not worth anything. In a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a split of a second, God can take us away. And then when the neshama, the, the neshama understands when it's outside the body, and then it, it really has a true concept of the truth in this world. Now the, the spiritual eye sees everything, not the physical eyes that enjoy this world, but the spiritual one. Then he says, wow, I should have put Kisri Rosh and Bitsua before I went out of the body. Now I cannot do anything. That's why 30 days the Neshama tries to go back to the body. When a person dies, the Neshama does not go anywhere. It's still around him. Because then it understands the concept. I had the privilege to do its both the Schut, the Mary to do, and I didn't do it. And it wants to go back inside in order that the body will wake up, that it can do something, but it can't because it's the end. You cannot go back. And it, can, and, the, and it depends on their children, and that they will have the merit to give schut to their parents. That's it. If they will give them the merit, they will elevate in, in heaven. Otherwise, they don't have any elevation. It depends on us. Unless, like a merciful person will say, Kaddish will say, so do something for those people that people do not say Kaddish for them. So if you I understand? Put cover, it's going to my, uh, my cover at high level? What? Huh? Better! All the that you don't understand. כל דבר שאת עושה למצוות, את מעלה את הזכויות של כל, זה כל המשפחה שלך למעלה. אחד מהשני, כי את מזכה אותם. ממש, we are in, you know, there's four עולמות, אביה, there are four עולמות, which means אציל, אביה, they are called אביה, and this is אצילות. זה ראשי תיבות של ארבעה עולמות, שנקראים אצילות. This is the Aleph of Silut, Bet Zebriya, Achagat Yetzirah, and then we have Asiyah. This is the world of making, of action. This is the world. We are in this world. So this is the only world that we can do a fixing. We cannot do it anywhere else. We cannot do it outside of our body. We have to be inside the body, the soul, the, this connection between Elyonim and Achtonim, which means between Hashem, and, 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 and earth over here has to be a connection. So we have the soul from Hashem and we have the body that is all a father, everything from earth that our father and mother gave us. This partnership creates us. Part of us we are heavenly and part of us we are earthly. This is the connection. Now only in this connection, in this chibur, in, in this connecting we can do something in this world. Without it, we cannot do anything because once the soul goes out of the body, the body does, cannot move anything. All of its chayut, all of its lifeliness is because of the soul. It, it can see because of the soul. It can hear because of the soul. It can feel because of the soul. It can smell because of the soul. It can speak because of the soul. Without the soul, the moment the person dies, he is not, he did not rot yet, he's still over there. You can shout him in with a microphone, he won't hear anything. You can put a, a perfume in, inside his, uh, his nose, he won't smell anything. You can open his mouth, he won't speak. You can open his eyes and put a panas, a, a, light, on, a, a light on his eyes, he won't see anything. It's, and you hold his hand, they will fall. He does not have this living energy inside him. So the only place that we, are, we are not allowed even, you know, it's neglection in our, from our behalf, if we allow ourselves to say, okay, tomorrow we'll do tshuva, tomorrow we'll do that. 
dear women, we won't have time to do. We have two, we have two dates for Mashiach. One is Beita and the second one is which means either it comes on the day that God figured out when he created the world in Bereshit, or it will come sooner because of our, of our good deeds, our tshuva. If we'll do tshuva, then it will come sooner, dear women. And it depends if it will come on the time that God decided that it will come. Dear women, God forbid, it will come with judgment. It says that the fear in the world will be so severe that nobody can do tshuva then. Because of the, everybody will be so afraid from what will happen in the world. I already told you that the small things that are going to happen, that God is going to take the cover of the sun. From the sun, the sun will be seven times warmer than it's now. And the moon is going to be with the warmth of the sun now. It says in the Nebim that people are going to melt. It, people are going to melt. The eyes are going to melt in the holes. It says that the walls will be so harsh. The fear will be so big in the world in, in, in such, in such amounts that people cannot even think of Tshuva. So then it's the end. We cannot, do, we cannot regret and go back from what we already did, but now we can. So don't postpone it to tomorrow. Don't say to me, you know what, I have friends, and you know in our society, everybody's like this. I'll wait, Bezrat Hashem, everybody. Don't wait for anything. Adraba, be happy. Say to yourself, I'm going to do Tshuva Hashem now. Be happy and do it now. Don't wait. Because when we do that, it's written the Sopar Shab Shalach Kiyad al Kesya Milchamal Hashem Ba'amalek Midor Dor. It says because the hand is on the throne of Hashem and it's missing in Hebrew, Aleph from the throne, from the Kise. And the name of God is only half of it because Amalek is still here. And it says in the Zohar Kadosh that the war against Amalek will be the hardest, even more harsh than Gog and Magog then the big war that will be with the nations, it says, that the war with Amalek will be, and who is Amalek? What is, what kind of war it will be? This is the war of faith. This is the 50th gate of impurity, dear women. The 50th gate of impurity is faith. You remember that the children of Israel went out of Egypt? 80% of them were inside the gate of the 50th gate. They, were, they passed away in the plague of Choshech, in the plague of darkness. And they were buried in that place so that the Egyptians won't know. Only 20% of the children of Israel went out of Egypt. And we want that all of us will have the merit. And we are the example of our children. Don't pay attention to what people will say around you. You know that you're doing the right thing. You have to encourage yourself. Because we need to be beautiful in the eyes of God. First of all, and we, we are beautiful. If we are beautiful, we are beautiful. Look, it says. Dear women, look. <coughs> look over here. You remember we are in the month of Elul. So we are Ahuvim, Lemala, Ben Nechmadim. We are beloved in heaven, and we are loved also here on earth. And the first letters of those words is the month of Elul. You see, Elul? Auvim lemala v'nechmadim lemata. This is the month of Elul, which means God loves us. We need to be beautiful in His eyes first. And when we are beautiful in His eyes, He gives us beauty. He gives us chen, that everybody sees this light that we, we project from our body. Because you can see the neshama. Rabbi Meir Balanes, he received his name. He wasn't called Meir. He, they called him Meir because his soul was glowing from his body. That's why they called him Meir. So dear women, it depends on us. And don't forget that we are the role models in our home. Everything that we do, our children do. They imitate us. Everything that we do. So every, it's like they are like sponges. Sorry? Oh, oh, to that, to that. Thank you. Wow, thank you. 
Now it means that you have uh, Kalkabada, <laughs> you are progressing in Hebrew. <laughs> you are fed. This man, this is a very important, you know what she told the man was missing here. You know what hap- what will happen with Zat Hashem Shemashiach? Amen. Ben Echmadim, Ketabti Glimem. But I would like to, it's like Mashiach is here, you know why? Because the evil inclination is called Samech Mim. Remember Samech Mim. Some now dear women. Samech Mim is the evil inclination. What will happen by the Tamim? It says by the Mara Masechet Sukkah. Masechet Sukkah Adaf Muntet, if I remember right. It says over there that when Mashiach comes, Beshachat La Yetzer Ara, Kadosh Baruch Hu is going to slaughter the evil inclination. But what does it mean to slaughter? And it's beautiful, you know what, I will tell you something. First of all, a, a small thing. Parashat Kitavo, I, I gave you lessons about Parashat Kitavo, so please look at the Parashat Kitavo. So you have Var Torah on the table, in TorahAnytime.com, go to this, these lectures and you will have over the Parashat Kitavo. No, no, this, this week's Parashat. But last week's Parashat, it was Parashat Kitetse. And over there it says that you have to hit a, a, a person that did sins 40 times and you're not allowed to, to uh, continue. Only 40 times. Look how beautiful. She spoke about the men, so maybe I should speak about it. They like good, good thing, I mean. So dear woman, listen. So I told you the evil inclination is called Samech Men. And I told you that Bezrat Hashem Bachrit God is going to slaughter the evil inclination. In general, it means that the evil inclination will become good. It wants to be good. I would like to tell you, it wants to be good. Why? Its job is to make us sin. That's its job. Our job is to fight it and not sin. And then if we won't sin, the evil inclination will have a merit to sing in front of Hashem. You know, each angel sings in front of Hashem. They do not pray like we pray here. Yeah? They sing. All the prayers are by singing, dear women. This is what will happen. Everything is by song, rhythm it has. So the evil inclination does not have the merit to sing in front of Hashem. When does it have the merit? The only time is when we conquer the evil inclination, then it has the merit to sing in front of Hashem. So, dear women, you know who caused it, who helped it to sing in front of Hashem? Yaakov Abinu. It's written in Parashat B'Shalach. Oh. Parashat B'Shalach. Uh, I know. <laughs> it's written in the Parashat B'Shalach. You remember that Yaakov Abinu was fighting Nilchan B'Ish. Was fighting with a man. And it says, the Zohar Kadosh says, who was the man that he was fighting with? It was the Samech Men. It was the angel of a sub. It was the Yetzavara, the Kitsu. It says the Samech Men was the angel that he was fighting with. So, dear women, and then he told him, leave me alone. The angel tells him, leave me alone because the morning is coming. The sun is coming, leave me alone, I need to go. So he says, you cannot go for that. Amen. He says, you cannot go. He says, tell me your name. So the evil, the evil inclination, the angel of Esat tells him, why do you want to know my name? Now, dear women, he wanted to know his name because he felt that maybe now is Mashiach. And his name is changing. The Samech Mem is changing now. To what will it change? We'll go back to Bereshit. Listen, it's very... If you want to understand it, we'll have to do it together. So, in Bereshit, we are in heaven, Gan Eden, and we see over there Adam Rishon, the first human being. Adam Rishon is there with Chava. God tells him, you are not allowed to eat from the tree of knowledge, Metzadad. And meanwhile, he has servants. The Zohar Kedosh says they used to give him salulo basav natnulo yain. They would give him meat and also give him wine to drink, which means the parnasa came to him. He did not have to do anything. <coughs> Food, everything he needed came to him. Now, I would like to tell you, dear women, the evil inclination was outside. It was not in his body. The evil inclination, he could speak to the evil inclination. And it wasn't evil then because he, it served Adam Arishon. It served him, the, the first human being. Up, upon his head of the first human being, the letter Mem, that Bella reminds me Mem, the letter Mem was flying upon his head, the Mem. And why the letter Mem? Because Mem starts Milchama, war, Mavet, death. 
מחלוקת, disagreement, everything starts with the letter mem, death starts with mem. מוות, מחלות, everything, all the good things, במרכאות, starts with the letter mem, dear women. So this letter was hanging upon his head and God told him, if you will eat from the tree of knowledge, then you're going to die. So dear women, what happened when he ate from the tree of knowledge, dear women, this letter mem went inside the name of God, a good name of God, one of the angels of God that gives us Parnassah. How do we know that? Look how beautiful everything is connected. King David writes it. In chapter, in his songs, in chapter 145, it says, Dear women, when we say, Look, I'll write it so you'll understand it with me. When we say, Look, There are a lot of explanations. Yes. Dear women, over here we have to concentrate on the names of God for parnasa for income. Over here in this uh, sentence. So we look at Potechet Yadecha. It starts with Pei. Over here, Aleph. And then you, this is one of the names of Hashem for parnasa And then we have to concentrate just to see it in front of our eyes. And then the last letters of each word, this is the second name of Hashem for parnasa you see it? But then, look over here. And taf. Okay. Now, if I will take this name, Chet Taf Chaf, over here, dear women. Shh, Pet, I will explain. If you have questions, uh, Chava, if you have questions, uh, so ask me. Okay, so Chetach, the Chav Safit. And if you take this, Bechilufei Otiot, which means when you exchange letters, Be'et Bash, okay, which means that the Taf becomes Aleph and the Aleph becomes Taf, the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet and the, uh, and the last letter, you exchange. So let's see. I will take over here. I have this, the Taf, okay? So instead of the Taf, I will write Aleph. Okay? And then I have Chet. So Chet is the eighth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. So let's count from the end, the eighth letter. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Samech, Nachon? This is Samech. And then let's see over here we have Chaf. Okay? So Chaf is the eleventh letter. Okay? Because one, Aleph, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the eleventh one. So let's go from the end. Do it, we'll do it together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, 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 something is wrong. No, 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 no. This is the eleventh. Okay, one, two, three, four. Ah, I forgot the shin. Oh, oh, I didn't count the shin. That's what I'm looking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the eleven. So I would like you to look. Please tell me what does it remind you? This is the name of God. Very special name of God. This is the name of Parnassah, the third name of Parnassah of Hashem. But if I will put inside the Mem, what do we have? The evil inclinations name, the angel of Esav. Look, I'm, if I'll join the Mem over here, this is the Samech Mem. Do you see that? This name of Hashem is the name of Parnassah. Before the sin of the first human being, this was the angel of Parnassah that gave the, the first human being Parnassah food, everything it wanted. This is the Zelech Haven, but I want to give you first of all the idea. So this, Ken. Et bash. Okay. How did you read? How did you read Sam Al Samad? Which letter is it? Okay. Okay. okay, dear women. So you have this name. This is part of the seventy-two names of Hashem. This is a, the name, part of the names of 70, 72 names of Hashem. Which letter is missing? Just to, uh, hmm. 
there's no letter missing. This is exactly, you know, the Samech, the Aleph, the Makaf Lamed. Okay? Yes, this is the angel of prosperity. This is the name of God for to have good income. Wait, wait. But this is what, this angel served the first human being in Gan Eden, in paradise and gave him food and everything that it needed and that he needed. And so listen, dear women, when the first human being sinned with Etzadat, then the letter Mem that was on the, above his head went into the, this name. And from here we have the Samech Mem. This is the name of the Samech Mem. It says, it says in Chumash Dvarim and in other places, various places in the Torah, it says that Bezrat Hashem Mashiach comes and, and we live in peace, Bezrat Hashem, and everything is good, then we won't have to worry for Parnassah. The moment that we are going to put the seed in the ground, the moment that we'll do that, it will grow. Because it's written Beparashat Kitetse, Ki Arbaim Yaken Ulo Yosif. Which means God is going, how is, uh, how is he going to slaughter the angel of death? Because you know that the evil inclination is also, Satan is also the angel of death. Remember the Masechet Baba Batra, I told you it has three jobs. It's the evil inclination, it comes to make you sin. Then it goes and prosecutes you, so it's the Satan, and then it asks permission to kill you, then it's also the Malach Hamave. So when God, Bezrat Hashem, when Mashiach Yegiya, how is he going to slaughter him? By taking out the Mem from his name. And then the angel that gives prosperity from the 72 names of God will come back to himself and will have everything we need without any bother. It will be in our hands already. Do you understand? All of this is the Mem. <laughs> All of this is the 40. Arbaim Yakenu. Arbaim in numerical value is equal to the letter Mem. Arbaim in numerical value begimatria is the letter Mem. So God is going to take this letter out of the name of the Samech Mem and it will become a good angel. Angel of prosperity. Do you understand? Of Parnassah Hashem. Right now there is no angel with this four letter Mem. Don't you remember? Okay, we studied how does the Samech Mem get, gets his energy in order to do all these bad things. It gets it from the words, the letters, L. How does it get it? Because the Mem is open. You remember? This Mem is open. So it takes, it has to, every, the evil inclination has to feed itself with energy of life. How does it feed itself? With the letters, the holy letters. Those are the holy letters. So the Samech Mem takes it from El. And I told you, for example now, that how can we close the mouth of the Mem? Instead, it, instead of it, it being Samech Mem, it will become Sam El, which means, I'll wipe the board so you can see it. Sam, look. Instead of being Samech Mem, it will become Sam, and then El. Okay? How do we cause it to close its mouth and instead of open Mem to a closed Mem? So look, the Mishnah starts with, these, with this sentence. Memetai korin shma shel arbi. Memetai, which means when do we read shma uh, at night? You know, the last, the last prayer. So it starts Mematai with a Mem, with an open Mem. Mematai. Korin Shema. This is the beginning. Okay? This is the. Be and then it ends, the Mishnah ends with the word Shalom. This is a closed mem. This is an open, it starts with an open mem and it ends with a closed mem. What does it mean? It means that if we study Torah at the beginning, the evil inclination sits on us. 
But then through our studies, we learn and then our, our spiritual eyes are opened. We understand things. We, are, we understand the, the, the essence of the truth in this world. We do not see the lie, we see the truth. And then this mem that is open, that can eat from this holy letters, it becomes closed. And when you finish studying the Torah, you see the man, the open man becomes a closed man, and then this is some. It's closed, then the evil inclination is not working on you anymore because it cannot be fed from holiness. Do you understand? By us studying Torah. And it says, in Masechet Brachot, it says, that hey, it says like this. If you can see that you have a problem with your even inclination, we all have, and God says you have to, I, I created the even inclination, and you cannot conquer it without my help. So he says, this is the, the seasoning of the evil inclination is the Torah. If you study the Torah, then you can conquer the evil inclination. So it says, that, so what do you have to do every day? You have, first of all, to make the good inclination, uh, be angry with a bad inclination, with the evil inclination. Because to make the good inclination, speak with a bad inclination and tell them that I don't want to hear you now. And then Bezrat Hashem, if this does not help, you should study Torah. So you come to a shul Torah, you learn also from the, from the infinite, sometimes you, you hear Shulay Torah. You, at home you read the healing, you, you, you dive into Hashem, everything you do, Parashat Chala, Tarat HaMishpacha, everything is Torah. Tarat HaMishpacha, everything, Adakat Merot of Shabbat, when you light the candles for Shabbat, everything is Torah. If this doesn't help, dear women, then you have to read Shema Yisrael. And of course you do that. Then you have to concentrate on Shema Yisrael. Why? Because Shema Yisrael is accepting the Hashem in us. It says, he who says Shema Yisrael is like a holding a sword with two mouths in his hand. Which means a sword with two mouths in, in his hand. If that, ma? He who reads. He who reads, Kriyat Shema, Shema Yisrael, at night, in the morning and at night, but at night, if you read at night, Dear women, if this doesn't help, we should remind ourselves the day of death. We should remind ourselves that eventually we go back to earth. We were created from earth and we go back. When God takes his part from us, then we are left with only the body that rots in the ground. We go back to earth when we remember that this is only what we are. We go back to earth and it's nothing. If we remember that, if you know that if you remember three things, it said three things we should remember. Where did you come from? Where are you going to? And who are you going to stand in judgment before? So you will know that you came from a drop of sperm. And then which means that you are going to the earth back and then the worms are going to eat you, you are going to become dust. And then it says, remember who you are going to stand in front, of. You're in front of, you are going to stand in front of the King of Kings. Over there you cannot have any excuse, you cannot use any excuse. Because God will ask you, I told you before you went to this world, before you came to this world, be righteous. Do not sin. Be righteous before we came to this world. So dear women, with these words, I would like to bless all of us. Bezrat Hashem, Shagia Mashiach Tzitim Amen. Amen. Shagia Mebeser Al Yaron Abi Zachur Latov. Amen. 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 Amen.